everyone. Welcome back to the Fire with Addicts podcast series. We got another doozy for you, and another good one. Um, my new friend Vic. Uh, Vic, say hi. Hey, how you doing? All right. We'll get into Vic's background and how I met this character um, in a minute. But um, right now, I want to get into first off, um, Vic. What is your um, first off? Yeah, let's get into this. Where are you calling from um, uh, right now? Where are you at? Boise, Idaho. Like Boise, like proper or like uh, or just just just, just, just uh, outside. Oh uh, no! Like literally, I mean, yeah. The South capital, Boise, like, yeah, the okay. capital, South Boise, Idaho. My uh, my property's um, three minutes from the airport. <laughs> Fly in. That's kind of right nice. Over. Yeah, right yeah, on. It's beautiful. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. Um. How about this? What is what is your background, and how did that evolve into what you do now? So my my base, my actual background was, you know, I, I did uh, a number of years in wildland firefighting and logging. Um, worked for a couple of different logging outfits, but fell in love with just, you know, the overall vibe of of where a chainsaw could take you. You know what I mean? And and then also too, like, you know, working with crews, working with awesome bosses and just like that kind of morale and camaraderie that's that's unique to that industry that like, if you're in that industry, you get it, you know what I mean? So that, you know, so yeah, mainly that camaraderie, just the badassness of what, of what can be done, like with a chainsaw and then, you know, all the, all the places you get to see all the hidden mountain ranges you get to be on and stuff that you would just never be on unless, or be in, unless, you know, you had to dump some trees or take out, you know, just whatever, whatever the scope of work was for that area. So, yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you describe um, your company, what you do and your geographic outreach? Okay. Yeah. So our company name is a cut above tree service. Um, We've been in operation for 21 years, started here in the Treasure Valley, particularly out of Star, Idaho. Um, And we do everything from planting the smallest tree to removing of the largest tree. Um, you know, we, we treat trees, we like anything in the tree realm, uh, we transplant trees. We got the equipment to do that tree spades. Um, you know, just your, your typical tree service, but there are some things, you know, that we, we incorporate with, with our company that just, it doesn't leave any room for just not being able to do it. If that makes sense, we can facilitate everything. And then, gotcha. um, yeah, and then so, you know, we work, we work the Treasure Valley, but do a number of commercial account, accounts, um, essentially all over America. So. So how does that work? So like you're based out of Idaho and there's a company mm-hmm. like, I don't know, in Montana or Florida. Mm-hmm. Why would they, why would they call your company and fly you out or have you drive there? Mm-hmm. Do the work and come back versus having a local company do it. What it is, and I mean, quite frankly, it's just because of how and the team that I've built and, you know, brought in and surrounded myself with. It's just kind of how we operate and roll that. That was attractive to people and people found out about it, you know, or a friend of family re- referral however it worked out is just like, Hey, you know, we got these guys out here. And then, you know, if, if we ever got a phone call from them or say, if anybody ever reached out, we just, you know, we were just ourselves. We, re- we returned a phone call, we returned an email. Right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, and then, you know, some of them even came out and like checked our work, rolled around with us for maybe a couple of days or a week, just to kind of see like, you know, what we could actually facilitate. And then, you know, in the job sense too, it all just comes down to, you know, obviously if numbers make sense. So it's like, you know, Hey, all, all we can do is look at a property or look at a job and, you know, submit, you know, submit a bid or tell you what it's going to cost. And, you know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you know, no, no harm, no foul kind of just go on from there. But fortunately enough, we've had the opportunity to work with folks that everything just, you know, worked out right and made sense. So we've just been rolling with it. Right on. And you just got back home from my area, right? Yep. 
Yep. So you were here in the Seattle area for how many weeks? Like four? Uh, we we were there for two, and so we we block it out because we take care of a number of apartment complexes out there, Tacoma and Everett and Vancouver, and um. So really, I mean, I try to be in there as quick and and, and get out as quick as possible, right? But you know, sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm whether, you know, it's weather or other factors, you know, uh, more or less determine how long we stay, but yeah, two weeks and then, uh, came back and, um, we're just waiting to schedule the next one because we're going to be back up there again. Are you right on? Cool. cool, cool. Um, do you remember the story of how I met you? I sure do. (laughs) Okay. You want to share with us? Yeah, so um, we we do love and utilize um, Chip Drop. Um, I think it's an awesome, it's, you know, it's an awesome tool for guys in the industry, and I would encourage you guys, anybody, to to use it as much as possible because it's it's awesome. But um, I I logged into Chip Drop because we did a couple removals, and I had some logs I wanted to get out of my trailer, and so uh, Travis's address popped up. <laughs> And there I went, got these logs out of my trailer, you know what I mean? And uh, everything just kind of started from there. Yeah, it was it was awesome that I was actually um, um, available at home. And I saw your, your truck and trailer in my cameras and I popped up. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great to, to meet you and then to make sure that um, you're able to dump where I wanted you to dump, which is, which is awesome for Chip Drop because it, it shows you on there, like you, you can type in where you want it dropped type thing. And um, it's nice to be able to meet the arborist or the tour service folk to make sure that they actually drop it where you where you want it, not like in the middle of your driveway or on the flower yeah. bed or whatever, whatever uh, exactly. type thing. Um, yeah, that, that was some good wood that you dropped. I'm very impressed. And I hope that you can bring me some more, but I think that it was more of like a like oddball species that isn't very common in my neck of the woods. But yeah, let me know. Um, if you have any wood and you're you're close by, um, so I, for chip drop, not to not to not to plug them too much, but is that something that you utilize often or all the time when you're working throughout the the U.S. Then? Oh yeah, 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 yep. And I even use it, you know, sometimes even when we're here in the valley. But you know, being established out here too. Um, I have relationships with a number of nurseries and then even certain clients, you know, if, if I'm in the area, um, you know, we'll, we'll just go and, and dump the chips there. But, you know, in the day to day, though, it, it comes down to, you know, logistics as far as, you know, how long is it going to take this me to get this truck empty and so on and so forth. So, I mean, if it all makes sense, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll use the crap out of that app or if I just have to wait till the end of the day or first thing in the morning, Um you know, I'll get it empty. It's cool too. Cause like where I live too, I mean, I got this place specifically because I'm right in the middle of two, uh, you know, dumps, essentially two, two dump sites. So if I have to go, uh, West, <laughs> well, then I'm stopping there. Or, you know, if I have to go East, well, I'm stopping there, you know, but we got a number of relationships with nurseries out here too, that, uh, just let me go in and, and unload clean ships as well. So nice. yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. When you're going to your local dumps, uh, you have to pay a fee, right, to dump your 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 logs there, right? Yeah, um, it depends. Certain times of the year, too. Yeah, um, there there is a charge, um, and then certain dumps out here too will buy volume or just materials, right? Um, there's there there's a couple that keep it just clean chips. If it's just clean chips and and rakings, you know, they'll keep it free for, you know, the beginning of the quote unquote season that we have here. It just, it just kind of all depends, but um, yeah, I mean, typically though, to answer your question, yeah, there typically is a fee. <laughs> That's why we try to make saying. it worth it every time. Yeah. Right? Like I'm not just going to dump half a truck, you know, I'm not just going to dump 10 yards. I'm going to do the whole 20 or whole 18, whatever truck yes. goes in there. So, yeah. Yeah. But with, with having someone local where you're working, that you can count on to dump stuff uh-huh. and or using chip drop, which is great because you're only paying not a lot of money to drop at certain places, which is less than going to the local dump, I assume. But if you have to have your truck or trailer be full or occupied for more than a day, 
you can't use that equipment. So to, to offload that, whatever load you have, as soon as possible, you're losing money when that's full, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, essentially, because it's just, you know, it's, it's another it's another step that we have to take to reach our end goal. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I try to limit as many steps in that process as possible, I, you know, i.e. starting the day off with an empty truck so that we, we get done and I, I got to dump the next day. You know, if there is a time I mean, we've we've had jobs, certain certain species of trees, too. I mean, they just fluff up when you run them through the chipper. So, I mean, we've we've been on huge removals where, you know, we've had to make, let's just say, two dump runs. And because of the the debris just filled you know one of my trucks all the way two times Mm -hmm. so i mean Mm -hmm. but yeah no i mean i mean dump runs yeah can be a uh just like i said a a, a, an an extra step sometimes that is you know whether it's a a pain in the butt or you know a cost it's like i mean either way yeah we have to we have to take that step but um yeah we try we try to limit it as much as possible of course of course that's where it's beneficial Mm -hmm. (laughs) as far as cost or you know what i mean time to go to, to yeah. whatever you where you can dump yeah a yeah. lot of us a lot of people watching are very much in tune with getting free wood uh-huh. and wanting to find connections with local tree service people in their area or arborists etc do you have any tips for them to go about uh connecting with someone like you in your profession is it having to email or message them or go to their office or like knock on the window? Like what's the easiest, best way to approach um, uh, free wood from you, from you, from you um, guys? Uh, you know, really just, just hitting up the company, give them a phone call. And, you know, sometimes though, I wouldn't say frustration though, but sometimes, you know, just trying to facilitate certain requests with folks, it can be a little, a bit of a headache at sometimes because it's like, Hey, you know, my name's Dale and I'd love to get some wood from you guys, but then they'll put like a specific on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can take anything, but, it, but I, I, you know, I really would just prefer, you know, like a, like, you know, three foot long pieces and, and maybe they're, you know, only like 13 DBH. And it's like, well, Dale, I can't, you, you know what I mean? I can't like, take more time to facilitate that request of you know of of catering to making this this log what you want just to bring it to you you know what I mean brother like I'm sorry but uh I don't know if I can do that and so it's just like well I'll try to catch you on the next one or something because like I said we're just if that truck or trailer is full we're trying to get it out of there as quick as possible and that's just but you know so I guess to answer your question it would be maybe not being too specific and and then just being able to to facilitate your own request wherever you're having them bring it to you at it's like hey i guess i guess the phrase would more or less just kind of be like you know you get what you get and mm-hmm. that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of have to be cool otherwise i'm just going to bring it to the dump or wherever mm-hmm. we're you know so yeah i guess just kind of just kind of understanding you know like not everybody has to understand where we're coming from, but I mean it. Yeah, you know, just from a you know tree guy to other tree guys, I'm sure they would agree. It's just like you know, you can't really, can't really be too picky if if you want me to bring you free debris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna bring them cottonwood again and again and again, they're gonna be like, you know what, I'm done, Vic. Like, I don't want any more. But I'm just oh, yeah, gonna be like, yeah. be, be, be like pine one time, maybe mm-hmm. maple twice in a row and then some other i mean whatever i think i think there should be some give and take on there um with with that but i think to find those good contacts where it would be beneficial for both parties come to my property dump i don't care what it is i know that your time is valuable come to my place dump whenever you need to i don't care what it is log big rounds fine and then come back next time to give me a heads up um, versus like, I'm, I'm, I only want maple. I only want, <laughs> you know, like the, the snobs out there. It's not, yeah, big time. Now, you know, and, 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 and I have catered to folks sometimes. I mean, yeah, I, and I get it because, you know, 
none of nobody wants essentially but but i'm always like up front with them you know if, if, if the office gets a phone call and they forward it to me i'll reach out to that person and say hey so hey you called in because you want you know you want some rounds or you want some logs and they're like yeah 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 and i'm like all right well j and just to, to touch on your point i'm like well it's a bunch of cottonwood or it's a bunch of poplar <laughs> or whatever and they're like oh well well i don't want that and i'm like okay <laughs> so let me well, call you, you back yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but that's just again just kind of how we operate like you know i i work every single day you know and until in the summer until the sun goes down and in the winter you know i'll still go until the sun goes down i'll just turn on a heater so i'm really involved i try to get back with everybody you know and so but yeah just that communication part if somebody reaches out to another tree service whatever just you know yeah, maybe just leave one or two <laughs> kind of specifics. No poplar, no cottonwood. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm coming in hot then, brother. You know what I mean? Here it comes. <laughs> I hear you. And so real quick, real quick, one question on that note, and then we'll move on. Um, I know with with with, with, with a chip drop, you can tip the, uh, the the drivers coming in, but if you're, if it's like a, like, you know, or you have, you're in contact with, with, with a true service company and the email they text you they're on their way now um w would it be appreciative for like twenty dollars for like gas money or like lunch or do you need that tip or need the extra 20 bucks spot or like you're fine just having to get rid of the wood for free and you're you're done and over with i'm, I'm curious well yeah i mean like you know just i'll, I'll speak for for myself you know and, and my company and my guys um you know, we're just so thankful <laughs> that this app is around that, that I can log into and four minutes away, there's somebody, right? Like that's, that's huge. I mean, you know, we got customers and clients and stuff like, yeah, I mean, we, the guys get tips and stuff. So, I mean, that's, that's always an awesome, awesome, you know, gesture anybody could give us in our industry and, 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 and really in any industry, right? Like, you know, you, you get a tip. It's like, wow, wow, you know, thank you. You know what I mean? But like, mm -hmm. you know, for, for us, for me, like, yeah, no, I'm never, I'm never expecting or, or like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe something cool will happen here. Because like I said, that just means the world to me primarily in the first place. It's like, wow, you know, hey, thanks for signing up for this app. And thanks for letting me come over here. Like, thank you. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so for, yeah. for sure. So so basically, tips aren't expected, but they're awesome. So people out there <laughs> watching this, if you want free Travis Wood, Arbrush, mm -hmm. whatever, um, just give give some money or some brown. I don't know, just just to be thankful. But the extra tip would be even even better that they would be more apt to come to you with their wood more. So maybe give you better wood next time. Just a food for thought. Anyway. Moving on, Vic, you are you are the founder and uh, the company owner of your company, correct? Yes, yes, it's me and my brother. Yep, and then we and have, then, uh, yeah, and then my my stepdad, he was the founder. Gotcha. Okay, and mm -hmm. then how many how many people are on your crew, more or less? Do we you got know? we got eight, 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 eight and, here in town. Yeah. And then do you have other like on call or, or people who are in different states too that you can you can call up yeah. to help you? Yeah. So when we do go out of town, um we 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 put together, we formulate what like what we call is more or less it's called a hot shot crew, right? And so, you know, these guys, I got a couple guys they work for other, you know, they have other jobs that they do, but they really they got they like they love the industry, but you know, they they can't because, you know, maybe they got families or, or however, they don't like sometimes during the busy season, just the, the inconsistencies as far as like, you know, like, like I could say on Monday, Hey, we're going to, we're going to go from seven 30 to three 30. Well, if that changes, <laughs> you know, uh, sorry. So sometimes, you know, sometimes you run into that, but so I got a couple of guys. Yeah. They're, they're regular nine to fives. Let's just say they know they just got to be to work at, at nine and they know they're going to go to home or they're going to go home at five type type situation. So mm -hmm. I got a couple guys like that too. Like, you know, we give them the schedule for out of town gigs and uh, you know, they make that work because they, 
they they're able to schedule it and plan for it and all that stuff but um yeah you know like normal normal day-to-day operations we're rolling eight here in the valley and then whenever we go out of state or out of town um we we assemble the hotshot crew and we go out and get it done do you ever use contract climbers or contract arborists when you're when you're moving about we we have um but you know, like we got a, we got a lot of talent with us. And then we got also, we got a lot of equipment, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not your, you know, like I said, quote unquote, just kind of the smaller guy trying to, trying to build something, you know what I mean? Like I said, we've been around for 21 years. So Mm -hmm. um, I've never, I, I personally, no, I mean, I've never, I've never utilized that resource. Um, We've just always been blessed to have really good climbers, really good, uh guys come on staff with us and and kill it with us so yeah right on Mm -hmm. very cool very cool are you so then being being the one who runs the show um uh more or less are you doing everything are you up in the tree and driving around cutting bucking or are you just in the truck with your coffee making sure that everyone is safe and doing their (laughs) job so I wake up every morning and I fire up all the trucks here. Uh, okay. when in the, in the, in the, in the normal, uh, five day a week, Monday through Friday, uh, here in the Valley, I wake up every morning and I'm firing up the trucks and, or positioning them to drive off the yard smoothly. Um, uh, depending on the job, like if it's a big removal, like just the other day, we had a two day removal. It was one of the biggest maples, you know, that I've I've done out here in the past couple of years, and uh, then we had a, a big old spruce with it. So we, you know, two day a two day job. Um, no, I'm there. I'm cutting. I I did I did two big old poplars today. Uh, started at eleven. I got done at three. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh-huh. I'm, I'm cutting. I'm I'm cutting. I'm climbing. Um, if I have to dip out to go do an estimate, just because I'm, I'm in the area, I do that. I answer the phone sometimes too, but we got an office gal and then my brother is a lot of the back end stuff too. Um, you know, handling estimates, uh, meeting with folks, um, obviously a lot of the office stuff, but you know, if, if we need him to come out too, because I bumped somewhere else and did something, he, you know, he drives in and puts on his hard hat and goes to work as well. So, I mean, no, like those. I guess to answer your question, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I don't feel right unless I am with my guys or the crew, in in a way like side by side with them. You know what I mean? Like I have mm-hmm. to, I have to do that every day. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm I I I'm slamming stuff in the chipper every day, man. I'm <laughs> I I gra- I'll, I'll grab a rake first. That's the guy that I am too. If if we got to do some raking up, you know what I mean. So it doesn't matter. I think that that shows a lot about your character and how you and 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 how how you want to operate your business and and with you being being, being the leader that you're not beneath any task and uh-uh. you will do anything that you would order or would ask of one of your coworkers staff members to do as well from driving the truck to raking to bucking to the hardcore manual labor that you're all doing versus just having to point your finger, you do this, you do that uh, oh, yeah. type of thing. Um, good for you, man. Yeah. Good for you. Um, yep. Let's let's segue into equipment. Um, mm-hmm. Because you're, because you, you do cut as well. What is, what is your favorite saw right now or, and, or what is the favorite saw that your crew likes to fight over of who's going to be running that, that one specific saw? <laughs> Well, like when it comes to the big stuff, it's got to go to because because I run all steel, all steel saws. Um, but yeah, when it comes to big stuff, you know they they're the first to grab one of the five hundred eyes. I got a couple of those. I think I got Ooh. I don't know like four five hundred eyes. They all got the bark Jeez. box on them. So Jeez. you know I got all these six six ones and everything. They don't even touch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so for big stuff, I mean, typically, you know, we're running 500 eyes and then, you know, I, of course I got your standard 201s that we're climbing with. Um, yeah, you know, they're all, they're all ported out. And... 
<laughs> sounds obnoxious, you know. So I mean, it's fun. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but you know, you can you could do a lot of the same stuff, you know, with just the three six two. It might cut a little slower. Obviously, it's going to, but you know, but uh, we have backup saws too that we run. Um, I'm really liking some of the echo stuff that they're putting out, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm a still guy, you know. I mean, that's really that's really all I've. All, all I know and all I just want to just stay with just because, you know, it's a reliable tool. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I use Is the crap it, out of it. So are you brand loyal to steel because that's all you know and then you just know it's going to work and default to it? Or is it more of you have a local dealer that mm-hmm. is near you and they service your equipment, you know them, Versus the Husky dealer is the next county away, for example. Is that maybe yeah. why? Well, no. So so I service and maintain all our saws. Um, I've just, you know, when I got into this industry, like I said, I, I, when I, like, so, you know, like when I get into something, I want to learn everything about it. I want to try to be the best at it. So mm-hmm. when it came to, you know, it was, I'm, I'm handling a saw now. I, I took that bad boy apart and I put it all back together. I understood certain sounds and why it's running like this, or even why it's cutting like this. What, why is it doing that? So mm-hmm. to go back to, to steel, it's just because I've, I've worked with them for so long mm-hmm. that I can troubleshoot certain things just because that's, I've just played with that tool so much. So, um, you know, we keep, we keep our saws running, for a while you know what i mean like i've i i mean obviously yeah we we replace certain things and we've of course we've had to replace saws but it's not as frequent as you would think being you know as big as we are and as much work as we do because then jen then just too was still i mean if you if you if you slack on that daily maintenance whether if it's even just blowing the saw out you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it still will fire for you the next day as long as everything's good and gravy with it so yeah but but yeah, but we have the guys, you know, we'll go through them too, you know, or, or if, uh, if, if something does go wrong with one, you know, we try to address it same day. And I mean, like, why isn't that saw running? Well, well what do we got to do to get it running? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Um, so. That's interesting perspective that like, you're so used to that. I mean, I think each brand would be very similar, but in terms of the intricacies of the motor and how it's put together, that makes sense because they would have a trend of, of how it's how it's made and manufactured that the brand would have its own unique placement of things. And if you're so used to working on that brand and that to stray away from something else, having to relearn another one, that makes sense. I got you. I think the trend that I was that we have been hearing on the podcast and other um, um, medias is your brand loyal because the nearest dealer is that brand. And that's mm-hmm. more or less why, but I like your perspective because you're the one handling most maintenance. So then mm-hmm. when you're when you're maintaining your saw, I mean specifically when you're sharpening your your chain, are I mean I'm sure you're not hand filing. Are you mm-hmm. are you using a grinder or or what are you using to sharpen your your chains? So I got I got the automatic guy that we can run chains through (laughs) yeah but uh yeah no i i do it by hand hand file yeah jeez how long (laughs) does that take you for i mean because you have several saws that you need to sharpen i assume each day right yeah well i mean it just depends it depends on how bad the chain gets marred up at that point Mm -hmm. if it's got to if it's got to get a clean edge on it you know what i mean but um you know i stress I stress that, you know, with my guys and, you know, my guys are, are amazing, like seriously, but they're all really savvy with a saw, you know, and, and we, we kind of look for that too in the beginning, you know what I mean? And then if they, if they aren't, we try to show them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and I'll be the first guy just to, Hey, 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 you know, like shut it down real quick. And I'm like, Hey, try this or try that. Or, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just because, like I said, you know, in our industry too, uh, you know, a, a, a clean, functioning, sharp saw is our best, <laughs> is our best friend. So yeah. let's not compromise that. And then I, mm-hmm. I try to, I try to show little tricks and trades and little things with them to keep that, that flow, especially with our tools. But um, yeah, I mean, running a file over it, 
putting a clean edge on it. I'll do it all by hand. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I would have imagined that. Um, yeah, yeah. Right on, right on. Very cool. Um, well, you know, it's quick for me. Like, I, I, I tell my guys this. It's a funny, like, phrase, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not, like, quote, unquote, ex- exceptional or good at <laughs> at filing a chain because <laughs> – because I love it, right? Because I, yeah. I, I can't wait to, to, to put an edge on my chain or to clean it up. I'm good because I've literally messed up that many chains learning mm-hmm. in the industry. I've bounced off that many rocks. I've cut into trees and kept cutting on them, wondering what the heck's going on. Well, there was, you know, there was a big old piece of rebar that grew in there. Mm. And I didn't even, mm. I didn't even walk around mm. the tree to look at it. <laughs> so I have messed up. Yeah, I've messed up that much that unfortunately I had to fix my mistake that many times. So, but then it's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Just slam a file through it. We're good to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Um, on the note, so let me, let me ask you this: since um, uh, you're a pro, what are you are you making your own um mix or are you buying pre mixed stuff? Yeah, I boss? I just I just buy I just buy the stuff. You know this the steel mix and do you? I have it. Yep, yep. I'll just buy it. I mean that's and then again too, just going back to like you know your time and logistics. You know even in 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 part with like how the dump stuff is. I mean like you know if if you weigh out sometimes costs and time and it's just you know just go buy the mix and <laughs> and have it ready to oh, go. Good, right? not have to worry about it. <laughs> Now, yeah. are you are you buying the mix too because your saws are still under warranty, or just is it is it is it that too, plus time, or is that even a factor? The warranty with using yeah. their their mix, not no. not a factor. I no, hear you're saying. Not a factor. Yeah. Um, I I I drove by the um my city's um landscaping crew one day, and I saw that they had several cans of the VP mix that they're using i'm like that's a lot of money then with the local ace hardware store it was like 30 dollars for a gallon i'm like my taxpayer's money is paying for that that's crazy <laughs> but you have a good point it's 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 it's, it's time effective just to pull off the shelf pour it in your saw or you read it or your blower and you're going and that mm-hmm. that too you know it's i mean hope you you, you assume you hope in theory that is a good mix versus someone who doesn't know what they're doing with the ratio mm-hmm. of how much oil to put in the, the gas and then to shake it and mm-hmm. then use it. And then there's, there's debris in there, the whatever. Mm-hmm. So to know that you're buying something or you're going to use something that's going to, when you pour it in your machine, you're mm-hmm. going to pull on, it's going to run and not oh, sputter. Yeah. I'm not going to mess up the carb or, yeah. you know, so I, I guess you have a point there. Um, yeah. We got all our, so we got all of our like five gallon gas tanks, right? We got, we got little diesel ones for the machines. We got Mm -hmm. certain ones um, that are already mixed and then certain ones that are just straight unleaded for some of the other machines and everyone's marked, you know, with different identifying marks on it. So, I mean, obviously the diesel one's yellow, but you know what I mean? So guys know, and then, and then really though, like if you factored out costs and stuff too, I mean, you're, you'll be saving money if you get your five gallon mix and then you dump it in a jug with five gallons of unleaded and mm-hmm. that one five gallon deal will last you tons of jobs so that you're mm-hmm. not cracking off. Yeah. The 30 bucks, like you said, for a gallon of ready mixed fuel or whatever, like that, that to me doesn't make sense, but you know, everybody's different, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't you. do that i wouldn't do that yeah we just got For tons sure. of, of cans already loaded ready to go now when you have straight gas for some mm-hmm. of your equipment are you using regular unleaded are you using ethanol free or are you, are you using premium so i run even so for our for our saws it's it's everything's ethanol free with the unleaded mm-hmm. yeah like my i got a, a stump grinder that takes regular unleaded I'll 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 put ethanol free in her and then um yeah all my saw cans it's all ethanol free with with the mix already in it so or you know mix that, with it I gotcha and then that is that bought on the shelf or 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 in Boise to find that locally at the local stations uh so yeah in, in gas stations they got a pump marked ethanol free okay so, right on yeah cool some areas it's hard to find so they just 
default to what they have. Mm-hmm. For me, it, it's a drive to the next town to get it. So I, I buy everything in bulk. It, like I have, yeah. I have like two two gallon uh, jugs and one five. And then I'll same place will do my propane tanks. So I'll just do it all one time. So it's not 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 not, not like a long trip for nothing. Yeah. Uh, type thing. Um, cool. This is fascinating. Um. I have you had any issues with the auto tune on your 500 eyes at all? No, I mean, no, we haven't had any issues with with them since we bought them. You know, like I think, what was it? Was it like two years ago? I broke down and finally got one. We had a guy come in and he was a killer for us, doing really good. But I mean, ultimately, yeah, nobody likes being up in the air with a six six one strapped to the side of your saddle. So. Uh, we went and picked up a couple of 500 eyes that are a little lighter, but you know, just the power and they're cutting quicker. So that's where that transition came in. But mm-hmm. no, I mean, no, no, no issues yet at all with that song. And like I said, I think I got, I think I got four of them right now. That's crazy. Or three of them. Yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> I, I heard as I'm doing these, the interviews, I'm learning more about them and uh-huh. They they're helpful when you are changing elevations uh-huh. too. And with your travels, do you are are you driving to most locations, or there or are, are, are there locations where you have to like ship your 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 heads to yourself ahead of time so you have your own equipment when you when you get there? Is that a so, thing? I don't know. Well, yeah, no. Um, so just primarily how we are. Um how we have everything scheduled it's it's just it's north it's all in the northwest so yeah we'll just we'll just chug everything with us um we got certain trucks and stuff that we designate for those long hauls and um yeah we just pack everything with us right on very cool um let's let's i want to segue perhaps um maybe some advice (laughs) if there is someone who is young and um has the 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 mentality for and the and 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 maybe like the the healthy body for that wants to get into industry do you would you have any any tips for them of what to do now how to start how to approach a potential Mm -hmm. employer i'm curious if you have any tips on that well yeah just going into the industry not having any experience or anything but you really wanted to pursue that Mm -hmm. um you know, uh, it's going to take a minute and, you know, every manager, every owner or every tree service for a guy coming into it, you know, you know, just say the first one he calls and he, and he lands a job or whatever, it might not even be the right fit. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. be prepared, be prepared to get frustrated, be prepared to maybe say, this isn't for me. Right. But but call another tree service or even, you know, now, nowadays, I mean, shoot, you can jump online and join chat rooms with guys that are in the industry, you know what I mean? And even in your local area, um, talk to them, you know, if, if, if where you get put into and, and someone takes you on, like I said, if you, you're, you're always going to learn something with them, but if you're just not liking the vibe, if you're not liking the flow, if you don't think it's, it's safe or, even industry standards say, Hey, you know, I, I appreciate what you've done for me, but you know, here's my two weeks. I need to find another gig and Mm -hmm. go find another gig though. (laughs) Go find another gig and then, yeah. And then see how that one operates. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And you just, you gotta, you know, trees, you know, the tree world and tree guys, they're a different, it's a different kind of dude. And it's a, it's a really awesome industry and you know, you really gotta love it to put up with it because you know Mm -hmm. there's you get hurt you could die (laughs) you uh you know if you're trying to do your own thing you know run your own gig and stuff i mean there's you're gonna miss kids birthdays you're gonna you're gonna miss dance recitals you're gonna miss soccer practices you're gonna miss dates so you know there's a whole there's a whole kind of flow you're gonna have to mentally transition into as well um, but definitely don't get discouraged and, you know, research the industry to understand industry standards, to understand safety and to know what you're up against when you go into a place and maybe certain things that um, you're like, whoa, you know, I don't know if this is right. Uh. 
<laughs> and then, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, maybe that's not the right fit. So then you go to another one, and you're like, oh, cool. These guys actually wear hard hats. The last company didn't. And it's like, whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I, yeah. mm-hmm. I gotcha. I, I would say, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's many professions like this, but I think that true service um, industry, you have to jive with the folks that you work with. The camaraderie, mm-hmm. the bond of friendship, because even like a bad day could put you in a bad vibe and that could mess up the whole job. Or even you're, you're not mentally there because someone pissed you off early in the morning and you're up in a tree and that you need to be on your game 100% when you're up there. And, and you're working as a team too. Mm-hmm. Like, like you're, sometimes in, 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 in certain situations, your life is in someone's hands. So, so, uh, right sometimes um and to be aware of the situation make sure that your line is not attached to or, or the climber's line is not attached to a, a limb going into the chipper to be 100 uh-huh. aware all the whole time and if that's not happening and the safety standards are not to your liking but in your noticing like you said go someplace else because uh-huh. not all, all team not all not all tier service companies are the same they should be. I mean, the safety standards, whatever else. But from what I understand, they're not. And mm-hmm. um, and sometimes too, it's a work hard, play hard type environment where it's definitely not a job that you can come intoxicated or hungover the next day. You need to be on your game uh, like all the oh, time, yeah. Um, yeah. right? No, no tolerance at all for that. That's just not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not gonna work Ooh. out at all for anybody. Yeah, no, for sure. Big time, yeah. big time. Um, <laughs> let me let me segue again to something way random because I'm trying to flow organically just to whatever pops in my head. Yeah. Um, what is what is the coolest type of equipment that you have right now in your arsenal, uh-huh. or something cool that you want to, or, or cool that you have your eye on that would um, make your work better or funner or cooler to have. Um, well, right now, you know, we've kind of transitioned from the bucket trucks. I mean, we still have them and we still use them. Uh, but right now we got, um, we got a spider lift is what everybody's calling. It's a, it's a Laguine, um, 74 foot, uh, spider lift. It's a 2024, um, just the versatility of this machine. Uh, I mean, we're, we're creeping through, side side yard gates right into the backyard we're not having to do anything and then just the the movements it makes and and how fast it moves (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know like you know a couple of us that climb we're all gaining weight because you know this (laughs) this thing's spoiling us (laughs) yeah yeah we're all now just trying to volunteer to to climb now oh hey i was just gonna (laughs) My and, turn. My turn. Yeah, and you hear a guy in the background. They're like, "Why the lift will fit right there?" And it's like, "Uh, no, gosh, dang it." Okay, cool. Use lift. <laughs> yeah, but so that thing has been a huge blessing. Um, just huge for production, and you know, huge for morale too. Just having awesome stuff. Um, you know, it 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 mentally just you know, it, it sends you, sends you to the moon, just, you know, again, just kind of how efficient and cool and safe too, you know, Mm -hmm. our day is going to be because that confidence is there because of what, Mm -hmm. of what we have. So, I mean, that thing right there has really been a game changer for us lately. And I'm sure that you factor that in when you're, when you're bidding on jobs that you have to buy this equipment or you have this equipment and to have that job help pay for that equipment and you could bid it a little higher, but you are, are they, they can make your job a lot in and out faster and a lot safer for your crew to where you could, you could book another job the same day, for example, type thing. Right. I mean, it all pays for itself. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we kind of don't really, how do I say it? I mean, our, our, our estimate kind of formula is unique in that sense. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, how do I put it? I mean, I wouldn't really, I guess like lower a, a dollar amount on a job just because we have certain equipment. I mean, obviously it would be a little like, it would be different if I didn't have the equipment. Yes, for sure. 
if that makes sense, right? But um, we're just able to just more or less be consistent now with some of the equipment we've acquired over the years and, you know, be more consistent with our numbers that we're trying to reach and so on and so forth. Does that make sense, kind of? Yeah, it does, for sure. Do um, do you do any type of firewood processing, firewood sales, or so your your property, like you bring home some stuff, and then is that for you, or do you let your crew kind of take it and use it and sell it for their own purposes, or or, or do you do firewood at all? Yeah, so I do. Um, I do do firewood. I, I heat my home with it as well. Um, a buddy of mine um, uh, up at his property, he has a wood miser. Um, roughly that thing can crack off like four cords in an hour splitting it. Right. And wow. so, uh, he's got that up at his property and we've, we've merged, uh, kind of like on a little side thing, you know, um, just getting the firewood split, getting stuff delivered. You know, we'll, we'll we typically uh, on that note, we'll do, you know, at least a minimum of two cords, you know what I mean? Like try to just make those type of sales. Um, the opportunity for the guys in the company, if they wanted to make side money, um, it's there <clears throat> for them. Cause I, I like, you know, on my property, I have three 40 ton wood splitters. Um, wow. I have the space, I have the equipment here and, you know, I, I tell them just put an ad on Craigslist or put an ad on marketplace. If you want to make some extra money, just say, Hey, a cord of mixed hardwood, $250, here you go. You know, like mm -hmm. my girlfriend, she loves, she loves splitting, you know, pulling out the, the wood splitter and I'll cut rounds and she'll split. The wood. <laughs> she right she on. That's cool. Yeah. And then I, I told her too, I'm like, Hey, if you want to, you want to go get your nails done. <laughs> <laughs> Make some money. Then, you know, right? No, I mean, it's, it's just fun. It's just, it's just good fun. Really. I mean, that's how we, that's how we look at it. It's just kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're doing some work. We can get some money off of it. And like, none of us mind doing it again. But then that again, just kind of falls back to that tree guy thing. Right. It's like, what you'd rather spend your Saturday afternoon, like, you know, cutting rounds and splitting firewood. It's like, well, yeah, sometimes, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is there, yeah, so. is there a favorite species of wood to burn over in, in uh, Boise that people like? Well, so like, uh, uh, like the, the city, like down in the city, I, I've found that like a lot of folks, um, you know, they want, I mean, obviously hardwoods, you know, uh, they'll go for locusts, maple, ash, um, and then um, red fur is a, a really popular one out here. They like how it burns. They like how it smells. Um, so that's a big one too. Um I mean, there's guys out here that sell firewood. I mean, they'll, they'll they they sell poplar cords for 250 bucks a piece. Okay. Right. Huh. And so, um, yeah. I mean, just your general hardwoods, really. I mean, I don't try to sell anything if I ever did open. If I got bored, or you know, like I said, somebody wanted to make some extra money, or I don't know. Um, if we were to advertise for it, you know, just, we just kind of say mixed hardwood and then they're like, well, what, what, what exactly is that? And I'm like, well, you know, you're going to have some locusts, you're going to have some maple, you're going to have some ash, mix. you know what I mean? Cause <laughs> that's, you know, that's what I bring home just, just for that, you know, just in case type that, that, that just in case situation, that's what I'll mm -hmm. bring home. Like, so that big, huge maple, I'll send you pictures of it. Um, there's a picture of, uh, my guy dumping the top of it off on the Instagram. There's a video of it, but like that whole maple, I pretty much brought home, you know? So, wow. I mean, it's good stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, no, right I mean, on. that's kind of what we do with it. It's just kind of like a side thing or a personal thing or a family friends need it. Um, uh -huh. But I remember last year uh, a guy ran an ad and I mean, he, he was doing three chords a week. He was, he was selling three cords a week out here from us and like using, utilizing the debris that we had on my property. I was like, geez, well, that's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> Good for him. Good Lord. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a minimum of, you know, $750 cash every, every week. I mean, he, he could have right? pushed harder if he wanted to, but mm -hmm. um, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Splitting out there like snowing or when it's windy and cold or you know what i mean 
but I mm-hmm. keep all my I keep all my equipment in a shop. So the wood splitters fire up, you know, first pull, and mm-hmm. you know, and like I said, we got uh-huh. the skid steers out here too, and the saws to cut the manageable rounds. And you just go for it. You know what I mean? Right on. Cool. Yeah. Now because you're in the industry and then you do a little firewood on the side. Are you thinking about firewood and trees cutting like 24 seven, or is there any downtime in your mind that you don't want to think about anything related to fire or do like wood or cutting or trees? So do I, do I, am I always thinking about work? (laughs) Yeah, basically, basically. Yeah. (laughs) Well, everybody that knows me would say yes, that I am. And I need to slow I need to slow the F down and I need to enjoy life and smile, right? Like smile more about other things other than like, mm-hmm. oh, that was a cool job or, or cool. We landed this job or oh, cool. You know, we get to go here. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, the, so it's the fear of failure that really keeps me going and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not, not letting anybody down. Um, so uh, yeah, to answer your question, I am always thinking about it. I'm always trying to formulate a plan, you know, involving, yeah, let's just say firewood sales or, uh, you know, jobs and stuff. I was, I just told one of my guys today, I was like, hey, my boy Travis, he has this cool little stand thing <laughs> and he sells bundles. <laughs> I was yeah. like, if you want to, you could build one of those right at the corner entrance of my property and fill it up. You know what I mean? Like, very cool if you're not going to i might i don't know you know (laughs) right i mean it's not big money but it's 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 almost like passive income you don't you don't need to be there people come they grab what they need need, and then they pay they go you don't even need to be there it's just yeah yeah well very cool and then not only that though but you know just being in this industry um you just you never know who you're going to meet. You never know if you ever are going to land a job from somebody that called me to get a quarter wood, right? Like we've, I've done that before. I've somebody called, you know, off Craigslist, Hey, can we get a quarter wood? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll go deliver it. And the next thing you know, I'm giving them a bid on their trees. Right. And uh-huh, then even uh-huh. like, like with the chip drop thing, I mean, just the, the industry is so cool and the people that are involved in it are so amazing that I'm always just excited to do something like that because I never know where it will take me, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. being in the tree industry, utilizing chip drop, finding somebody to take logs. <laughs> that's how I met you. You know what I mean? For and sure. then you're, you know, one of the most amazing guys I've ever met. So it's just like, dude, I love this. Shit. <laughs> cool, right? Yeah. yeah I, I found I found that there's definitely a camaraderie amongst the firewood tree service community and we Mm -hmm. protect our own there are outliers and they're Mm -hmm. outliers for a reason most of the times they're they're dicks and people Mm -hmm. don't want to deal with them but somehow they're still around but for the most part we help our own um and support each other which is really cool uh, Mm -hmm. i found um yeah like like i we're we're traveling to vermont uh late late next month um to, Mm -hmm. to uh to drop some trees and to buck up and split um, some trees for my mother-in-law and, and my brother-in-law. And mm-hmm. I, and through connections, I, I, reached out, I have a guy coming who is in that area, but two hours away and he's going to bring his equipment and, and help us. He's a landscaper guy, but does firewood and tree stuff. Not, a, not like a pro, but he has the equipment where I would rather use someone local having mm-hmm. to rent it or buy it there and leave it there. If I can if yeah. they have someone come out, you know, and help me. So that's, that's as right now the plan, which um, I didn't think would be possible. I thought I would have to rent all this stuff from Home Depot or the local renter shop, like a, like a yeah. abused saw and a hammered, really slow splitter, like glacial <laughs> speed, whatever. Yeah. Um, very cool. Let me, let me ask you one last thing and then I'll let you go. Do you have any best practices, tips, lessons learned, or anything that you want to share with us um, that it maybe is lacking on social media or just some some knowledge? Because with, on, on my channel with this podcast too is is about sharing knowledge with mm-hmm. with with folks. So anything that you want um, to share 
Go ahead. Um, I mean, on that note, I mean, like I said, I love, I love how much, or I guess, you know, the flow of interest and how many eyes right now are just kind of being drawn and fascinated by, you know, this industry and what we do and in the tree service part. Um, I think that's way cool. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world, right? People die every day doing this thing. So, I mean, it's, it's not all necessarily, you know, cupcakes and fruit punch, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, for any, for any, yeah, for anybody that, you know, thinks they want to get into it, like I said, take the time to learn and to work with an outfit or a couple outfits that really know what they're doing. Like I said, this stuff takes time. And if you're not willing to put in that time, well, then, you know, uh, I don't know how far you'll get. I, I strive to learn and push myself every day. You know what I mean? I, I don't know everything. And so, but hey, I want to learn something every day, right? So even having that mindset and as an owner operator, I'm still like, hey, <laughs> whoa, I didn't even know that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like, but like I said, you know, and then, and then if there are guys like, you know, that just think that they can go get a chainsaw and go get a, a trailer or whatever and start a tree service. And, you know, I, I, I will be the first to admit this, you know, I've been there. I've done that. And I'll tell you right now, it sucks and it's not easy. And that doesn't mean necessarily you're even doing it the right way. Right. So, you know, you got to check yourself, which mm -hmm. I did, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and like I said, go learn, go learn the proper way, go get some certifications, you know, mentor, you know, or, you know, be an apprentice for somebody that's willing to kind of be your mentor in this industry. And, like embrace everything about it. Like, you know, yeah, from, from climbing to doing big removals to the proper rate of prune, you know what I mean? To, to what even is worth a firewood, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, yep. <laughs> there's so many aspects to this, right? Like you can never just kind of be like, oh no, I'm done. I, I kind of get it all. No, you don't, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, and like I said, I love where it's going. I love the people that 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 it puts me in front of and that I get to meet. But, you know, I guess yeah, I guess my only complaint is just the guys that that want to do this and they kind of misrepresent or they they mm. miss, you know, they 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 shine light on the industry in a bad way, which mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us, and we all knew, we, we all know who we are that do this the right way. It's kind of like, gosh, dang it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why would that guy do that? Why would that guy even post that? Like, that's just, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. not, because we're all not like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. um, but yeah, no, I mean, I said, man, I, I love it. It's, 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 it's an amazing journey. And, you know, every day I wake up and I do it and I just, I'm excited for, for the next place it's going to take me and and you know so i'm never never bored <laughs> i never like bored it well always said. learning yep. yep yeah man yeah so to be hungry for knowledge and and be humble that you don't yeah. know everything and to always want to learn um and to share that knowledge with with, with other people um oh, yeah. for sure i agree very cool well uh thank you for your time it was an honor to to interview you and have you on the podcast um, obviously yeah, we can talk you. for hours about, about this. So, <laughs> uh, viewers, if you want him on again, let me know, but for sure I'll, I'll list his, his socials down below his website, phone number. If you're in the Idaho Northwest area and you have a job, commercial, residential, whatever, and need help and, and you need a pro, um, uh, contact his company and maybe you can get a bit out uh, for him to come out and, uh, and, and help you. So, um, Cool, man. Well, uh, thanks again. Go, go ahead and say goodbye Bye to everyone. Right on. Later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very welcome. All right, folks. I appreciate you viewing. If you want to be on the podcast, let me know. Um, as always, thanks for viewing. Keep cutting. Cheers. All right.